Right, let's talk about Velko Palmovic then sticking in the championship. Reading aside, you mentioned a few moments ago, um, a side who will be facing Cardiff very soon indeed. This weekend, they beat Middlesbrough by a single goal. Alan Halilovic with the winner. Now, Reading are one of many sides who have had financial um, trouble over the, the past couple of years. Uh, they, though, look set to be sanctioned. Nine point deduction looks likely uh, for the Royals. And the man in charge, Velko Palmovic, is a manager who doesn't have a huge amount of champion, championship experience, but he has a season under his belt. Fans are now back in the stadium. And if you go back and listen to our dedicated Velko Palmovic podcast, you'll hear us talk about how he is a bit of a rebel rouser. You know, he likes to, he likes to say we're all in it together. He likes to to really motivate and really hammer home the message that everyone is fighting for the same cause and everyone is digging in. And Mike, it feels like an obvious thing to say, but if you're going to have nine points wiped off your title, having someone like that in the dugout is, is probably a good thing, isn't it? Uh, yes, and I think this is a job that potentially suits Paunovic more than the job he had at the beginning of the season, which was trying to measure up to the expectations of last season. I think now with this nine point deduction would cut him a bit more slack. Um, I think it's, you know, we say he's got a season, a year's championship experience under his belt now. I also think that he was potentially becoming one of those managers who'd been found out a little bit on a tactical level. And I think the more, the longer he'd been in the job, um, that he was, you know, he made a big splash and got a first mover advantage last season and got off to this blistering start that kind of kept. Reading's motivation going throughout the season. You know, it didn't matter how, how, if they hit sticky patches and had a few bad results, you still look at the league table and you're still in the mix for the top six. And I think that carried them along a, a, a long way last season. I think, but what happened was, because at the beginning he, he came into the club and never really was able to make the connection with the fans properly because fans weren't in the stadium, we never got to see the true Velko Paunovic in building those connections. You know, it's not just about the team and the players in the dressing room. It's about everyone around the club uh, and, and making everybody feel part of something, a collective dynamic and changing that culture. And, you know, by fans not being in the ground at the beginning of the last season, that was a big missed opportunity for Paunovic to really connect and build connections that would, would last a bit longer than they might for some other managers. So he returned to the job this season. We've all fans returned to the ground this season he, and, and they, Reading started this season. Not quite ready in any case because they had they had issues with you know recruitment and injuries and not being able to field the side they wanted to field at the beginning of the season and just not being quite ready to hit the ground running. But also the supporters weren't totally convinced by Paunovic. It's like in the space of 12 months, nine months of, of actually not being in stadiums, they'd seen the beginning of him and then passed judgment and this guy's ready to move along now and we've not even met him yet. And that's kind of the feeling at the beginning of the season. So they get off to a bad start and you're beginning to worry for Paunovic, all of a sudden now, there's something to buy into. There's a siege mentality. It's backs to the wall. You, you know, they're being backed into a corner. Rather than fans worrying now about the tactical details of what Paunovic is or isn't and what he can and can't do, they've got something bigger to worry about and it's not being relegated. And I think Paunovic is potentially the right sort of man to carry that sort of fight forward. And I think it eases the burden on his shoulders for it not to be about doing better than last season. And it's interesting because um, although fans weren't in the stadiums, obviously they they had their say on games last season, were able to watch through iFollow and, and uh, various streams. And I stumbled across many a Reading fan on Twitter calling Paunovic out on his tactical decisions. You know, every now and again, they would describe it as baffling. And they'd say, I just can't understand why he's taking this approach. What's this formation about, et cetera, et cetera. But... You know, to beat Fulham and Middlesbrough back to back and only concede one goal in those two games, you have to have some expertise in that field. But the general consensus of the Fulham game was that it was two moments of brilliance from Ovi Ajaria. And we know that Halilovic is also capable of, of you know, doing um, very impressive things, you know, creating chances for nothing. So is there an element of he is relying on the brilliance of individual players? Because, I mean, let's face it, John Swift is is having a a real purple patch as well. Is it? Is that the case? Is he Is he sometimes a bit over-reliant? Could that be an accusation made against him? Uh, I'm not sure, to be honest. I think that what I would say to this is that it's okay to level tactical problems at an emotional... Like, you, 
we talk about the two sides of judgment and value, you know, the, the criteria that managers value their decisions on. And some value the emotional, motivational side, some but emotional, motivational managers still have tactical now. So they just don't have as much necessarily as the real sort of those who that's their flow state, that's their specialist niche. And, and, and Paunovic will always make decisions based on what suits the group culture best. So when, he's, when his decisions are tactically baffling to fans, they might well be on a tactical level, but he's not making decisions primarily. The emotions come first and the tactics come next. And if he's going to upset certain players or it's going to upset the dynamics and he sees relationships between people in the eleven. He'll be picking a team based on relationships between players, how well they get on in the dressing room, how well they communicate. Do they have more of a telepathic understanding on the pitch because of, you know, how well they communicate off the pitch, you know? So what you see and what you value as a, you see from the outside, you look at a certain player, you think he's got these attributes or he should be playing this position or that position. I think Paunovic sees relationships between people. And he picks a team based on the relationships between those people and, and, and those emotional dynamics. Not talking emotional dynamics aren't necessarily about raw motivation and rallying speeches in the dressing room. It can be about, listen, these two guys really get on with each other. You can trust them to overlap at the right times, to communicate properly on the pitch. And, you know, if I put this guy in who's a bit of a, a bit of an outlier of the group, who doesn't really, you know, who's a bit quiet and doesn't really get involved in things then what message am I giving to the rest of the team that, you know, anybody can get in this team? It, you know, I, I want to reward the, the players who conduct themselves on a day-to-day -day basis in certain ways. And I think when you, when you generate and foster those emotional dynamics, you get results like the one at Fulham. Now, this also crept up, crept up on the hangout call on Thursday night, talking about this because Fulham's XG was kind of over three whole goals. And I think Reading created like barely half a goal worth of XG. It was, it was an, an absolute onslaught for 90 minutes. But I also caveat to that, I think there's certain types of teams that can win those matches against XG because of this collective dynamic that they have, the ability to back each other up and, and weather storms that other teams can't possibly weather because there's not that, you know, that, it's, uh, you know, covering covering your mates back and those kinds of dynamics, not just playing the game in front of you as it applies to you as an individual, but everybody, you know, staying compact. It's, we're, we're almost into, uh, we've talked about Paunovic using military language the way he talks about his teams. You know, a manager talks about in military language all the time. You start fostering a, a military mentality among your players. So when you've got game state on your side because you score early at Fulham, then you maybe can weather over three whole goals worth of XG and, and all mucking together and feel really good about it. And it really generates some emotional momentum that, that can kickstart a season. And I don't think it's necessarily always coincidence when teams get what appear to be these fluky results from managers who aren't particularly clever tactically because the, the people who see it that way are missing the emotional side as well. There's a balance there between the two things. We talked about Mick McCarthy, of course, earlier in the pod, and we talked about how, you know, we're not absolutely sure that he is the man to lead a side to promotion from the championship. Of course, he's done it before, but at this stage of his career, in this day and age where the the you know players and the players' needs have changed so much, we feel the same about Panovic, don't we? When Reading were up there and hunting down a playoff spot, there was always that feeling that they were probably going to drop away. But down at the bottom of the table, if you're looking at Reading and saying, right, they need 12 points here to stay up from, you know, the remaining 10 games or whatever it would be, you would back them to do that under Panovic, wouldn't you? Because it's that sort of siege mentality. They, they know what they have to do. And Panovic is, is the man to, to sort of rally them, isn't he? Yeah, I think what I've seen of Reading so far under Panovic is that when things are going well and he's got, you know, I don't think he's necessarily a manager that can focus on resources. And, you know, he might be get stretched a bit thin at times because he possibly overloads players or that, you know, but, you know, it, 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 the, the championship is obviously a very, very demanding competition. And if you're new to it, then obviously there's a lot of learning to do on how you manage your resources, how you rotate. I mean, we're talking about a manager that probably doesn't rotate that much because he's trying to preserve these these collective dynamics and these relationships between players. You can't be chopping and changing your team and then having this you know, culture that, that runs thick throughout the team. It's like almost like an extra man in itself. 
So, you know, I, I do think with the beginning of this season, Reading came back and weren't ready to attack the season. In August, they weren't, they just weren't there. They weren't. And, and since the international break, whatever's gone on in the international break, they've come back off the back of a 4 0 hiding at Huddersfield and seem like they've been transformed a little bit. And it's not necessarily anything tactical or anything technical that's particularly different. It's just, it's a fresh start. Something's, it's like the reset button's been hit. And they're all in it together again. And I just feel like they're a, a bit of a force of nature. They're hard to pin down and say exactly what it is that they're brilliant at, what it is that they're good at when they're in a good run of form. But they're just there's something a bit relentless about them. They, they're a team that can deliver 90-minute performances. They're a team that I would imagine cover pretty good distances, uh, you know, from 1 to 11 all over the pitch uh, relative to other teams. I think, you know, you talk about aerial duels and second balls and all these things that... You know, okay, you can measure them, and you can you can turn around and say, okay, let's win so many second balls, and we'll be all right, and take a statistical approach to it. I think it's just a natural consequence of the the dynamic that Panovic brings. So I, I think those things are kind of I think Reading and a sort of team that can go on runs of five to six games, uh, where when things are going well, you know, I don't think they're scared of any particular opposition. I don't. I mean, the Fulham result last week shows that. I don't think they're the sort of team that go to any venue, come up against any opposition, and when they're in a good place, don't believe that that team is beatable. So, you know, I think that can be a strong thing when it's there, but it's not going to be there for 46 games by definition because Paunovic isn't necessarily the sort of manager. Yeah, or, or because of Paunovic's nature, you know, you can't demand that sort of relentless emotional buy-in from players for 46 games non-stop particularly when the schedule is most grueling. Do you think he leans on the fact that Reading are underdogs quite a lot of the time, especially in games such as the Fulham one? Because you do find that you, you do get teams and Crawley are very much one in League Two, but you do get these teams that just have better records against sides that are towards the top of the table generally and can raise themselves for these big games. But then often on the back, so, so for example, you know, you, you might see them beat Fulham or you might see them win, beat West Brom, but then they might draw against someone that they were odds on against the following week or someone that's right down at the bottom of the table who they, you know, fans say we should be beating. Does he does he lean on the we are the underdogs and and you know nobody fancies us here? Does he is that a message he delivers sometimes? I think quite possibly. I think it's not uncommon for for um Managers of this type to basically, you know, that narrative is an easy narrative to fit, uh, to you know, to to push forward. Is that you know we're 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 let's we're in the trenches here. This is not going to be an easy game. And also the fact that you know it is a little bit less tactical to be the underdog and to sit and to 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 do the 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 out of possession side, the the ugly side of the game, and do that well. That bit's easy. That bit's non negotiable. And and, and Panovic always talks about non negotiables. Um, but when you're an odds on favourite and a team comes and sits against you and asks you to penetrate them and you've got to come up with innovative ways of trying to, you know, uh, of just trying to think outside the box and do something differently, I don't think that's necessarily Panovic's strength. You know, it's just force of will, force of emotion, uh, you know, and, and that collective dynamic and just keep banging away at the door and hope, hopefully it will open eventually, as opposed to anything little intricate or technical that's going to you know, on which the game might hinge and you just un unpick or unlock a defence with just one little tactical decision. I don't think that's necessarily a skill set. So, you know, that that that's the, the, those two kinds of things at play. I think it's the same for a lot of managers, but I do think, I just think he loves having a cause. And I think when you're nearer the bottom of the table and, you know, there's something like a points deduction that you're working against, which means it's not a level playing field. I think that's easier. It, it's just, um, it's, it's it's a gimme for someone like Panovic to use that as fuel uh, and to get generate something among his players. So uh, yeah, I, I do think that the siege mentality angle, the underdog handle, probably does suit him better than having to you know unpick defenses that that, that don't really leave much space and things like that. So I found a couple of questions before we look at how we think Panovic will get on with that minus nine deduction. And, and given what you've just been talking about, Mike, I think we're we're pretty positive on that in that regard so the player culture aspect he came in and he transformed Reading instantly you know they made that brilliant start under him and some of that may have been 
the unknown quantity that was Valko Panovic, you know, other managers not knowing what to what to expect from this guy who's who's just come into the championship and is managing in England for the first time. He struggled in the MLS previously, but he had terrific success with um, younger age groups and sort of in his in his home country and in other European countries. Sort of ha- making that transition from fostering the culture in different leagues. There's obviously a very notable difference between the championship and pretty much any other league, but. He got that instantly, didn't he? Now, we spoke on the Panovic podcast about his ability to research the intelligence that, you know, he does have a thirst for learning as well. You know, he's not, he might use military language, but he's not just a, a man who wants to go into battle all the time. He, you know, he does, he is a thinker, he is articulate as well. So he obviously has moved from one league to another, but getting hold of this player culture and I guess taking advantage of, of knowing what to expect from these players is something that, he has really harnessed. Now, that's a player culture when he was an unknown. Now he is, I guess, partly known. Is that something that he, he can sort of continue to work with, do you think? He has managed to sign a few players, but it, has he been helped by it being largely the same group as last season? Yeah, quite possibly, because I think I think con- continuity is a good thing for, you know, if you're trying to bring people together and you're trying to foster relationships, then continuity can only be a good thing. And... You know, even when you do bring new players into the building, the older players will pass on your message. Those hierarchies and status things within the dressing room will be established. Who are the senior pros who get who get the message best? Who are the ones, you know, the, the ones who he probably treats as senior pros pass on the message to younger players, new players come into the building and all of these things kind of take care of themselves when he's not there. Uh, I would say... The, I, I think Palnovich, to be, to be honest, is quite, was quite lucky to get this job. Uh, based on his track record. You know, we talk about first-time managers having a first-mover advantage, you know, coming into a new job. It takes a while for other clubs, other managers to suss them out. They're new to the league. Nobody really knows who they are. So there's an advantage to be gained from that. But you look at Panovic's track record and there's not an awful lot to buy into. And if I didn't know so much about personality profiling and, and having studied this emotional side of the game and what it is that Panovic actually does, I'd be wondering myself, you know, how's this guy landed this job kind of thing? But then obviously he's, he started so well and it was a solid first season. So, you know, he deserves a second season. I was beginning to worry about him this season. I thought he really might have been found out because of the expectations being at such a level that I think were unrealistic for Reddy. Um, But now that that dynamic has completely shifted and it's about backs to the wall and it's about can they stay up, I think it just suits him as a job better. Yeah, so I think it's starting to turn a little bit now for Reading, and we're seeing it in performances. We're seeing the best of... Or basically, I think what, what it is, is Reading are one of these teams that you can't necessarily pin down what the identity is, but you know when the identity's there. And I think pre-international break, the identity wasn't there. You know, they were a little bit flaky, and they've come back from the international break, and they've got a full complement of players, a full squad, and, you know... Uh, and and. Panovic is able to pick the plays he wants and, and those kinds of things. And I think they're back in that good place again. It's a, it, for me, it's about how much they can keep that dynamic going and for how long, because they will hit difficult patches. Um, but I think this is now a situation that suits him more than the, situ- the, than the hand I thought he was being dealt at the start of the season and the expectations I thought he was going to have to live up to. Because, you know, if you look at last season, the first half of the season, the second half of the season, what happened in the second half of the season wasn't good enough and it suggested that a lot of people had found him out and his track record coming into the job, which was questionable, you know, it, it, it was more like the track record, what you saw in the second half of the season. So given what you've been saying and that, you know, this points deduction is going to probably suit Palnovich and, and his siege mentality, I guess, this might be the only time and definitely the first time that I've ever asked you this question, but... Could a points deduction have potentially saved Panovic's job this season? I think so, yeah. I think so, because I don't think... I don't think... I didn't really give him much of a chance of living up to what the general expectations were of the standards he set last season. You know, we're talking about a manager that... Was it six wins out of the first seven matches last season? 18 points is a lot of points for a team that generally finished within the third quarter of the championship season on season. You know... And it was just like a, it was like an 18 point head start when nobody really knew what was going on in empty stadiums with anything. You know, there was so much uncertainty around at that time to just be, you know, get off to us from a standing start, just steal a march of 18 points. 
and be in that position at the top of the table. So, you know, and have that, the, the, the motivation that brings from just having that bulk of points right out of the gate, you know, it, it's worth more than that in itself because it, it keeps you motivated for so many other games, the incentives in terms of the league table. And I just think it was going to be, imposs- be impossible for Paunovic to live up to that standard. But the complete reframe now of, OK, we need to just make sure we're a championship club next season is a reframe that suits Paunovic more than the reframe he had. Because I think I think difficult periods in the season are going to be, especially now we've had this period of two or three games, the Fulham result especially, um, and then backing it up with the Middlesbrough win this weekend. I think now everybody's like, right, OK, let's give this guy a chance now. Let's put everything to the back. We, you know, we don't want to nitpick over tactics. Now we're thinking about a nine-point deduction. So that it, it, it's a complete game changer in terms of how Reading season's framed. And I think it's a reframe that just suits the type of attributes that Paunovic brings to the table. And to just have that heat taken off himself means that he can now weather a period of four or five games that aren't going particularly well in November, December, say, for example. But if that, you know, if that dotted line's in sight or you're in a position where you're thinking, yeah, we're still on course to stay up here if we keep going and been doing what we're doing when we're in good form. It's not, you know, to, to fall back into 13th, 14th position when you expect to be top six is intolerable when you get to December, you know, when you get deep into the season, particularly when you start the season with all these reservations about the manager in the first place. So I do think, obviously, it's not a good thing for Reading, but I think for Paunovic, I think, yeah, I think it possibly does save his job. I think it does give him a lot more potential longevity in the job this season and plays to his skill set better.